Hi, welcome to this tutorial on volumes of revolution. Now, what do we mean by volumes of revolution? Well, essentially, if we've got some axes and we've got a graph, let's suppose we have a graph that looks something like this. Okay, it could be any equation. We'll say that this is y equals some function of x. And if we take this graph, I mean it could be y equals x squared plus 1 or y equals x cubed plus whatever. It doesn't really matter at the moment, it's just some graph. If we were to look at a certain portion of this graph, say from there to there, this line say was at x equals some value a and this line here was at some other value of x, x equals b say. And we took this area in here, just shade that in. If we took that area and spun it around the x-axis, we would generate a solid, a solid of revolution, as we say. I'll try and attempt to draw what we would get. It would look something like this. Okay, my drawing's not particularly good, but hopefully it might give you the idea top of the curve here would be something like this. We'd get a kind of bell shape. It would do the same down here like that and we would get that going around there. Okay? So what we've got is the x-axis passing through here and it would just carry on through there and just let it emerge from the other side. The y-axis was up through here and that section that I've just drawn in here, well that was down there, down there. I've tried to draw this in 3D, not the greatest drawing, but as I say, I hope it gives you an idea of what is going on. I've taken that green section going from x equals a to x equals b, spun it around the x-axis and it would generate this solid. And what we're going to do is try and calculate the volume of solids like this, often called volumes of revolution. And it can be shown that the volume, this volume here, let's say volume v, it can be shown that this is equal to pi times the integral of whatever that equation was, we'll just call it y, we square it and we integrate it with respect to x, with our limits going from x equals a to x equals b, going from a to b. You might see this represented in textbooks as volume v equals pi times the integral of f of x instead of y, some function of x, and that function of x is squared with respect to x, and our limits are from a to b. So whatever, it's basically the same idea, and you should try and remember this, although in some exams you get a formula sheet and this will be quoted on your formula sheet, I'm sure. But I would encourage you to learn it. So let's show you how this works. Let's suppose we had a very simple question. We had some axes. And if they don't draw a diagram for you, quite often I would suggest it's useful to draw a diagram. Suppose we took the graph of y equals x squared plus 1. Remember the basic x squared graph would be a parabola going through the origin like that. Plus 1 would mean that it would come up by one unit. So we'll just sketch part of it in here. Let's say we've got it doing something like this. Okay? And suppose we're asked to find the volume of revolution between two lines, x equals 1, x equals 3, say, for this graph. This area here 
which is bounded by the graph and the x-axis and the lines x equals 1 and x equals 3. We spin this round the x-axis. You don't have to draw the solid that you're going to get, but I'm going to just draw it just so that you can see again what is happening. You're going to get a kind of bell shape, something like this. Okay, excuse my drawing if it's not perfect, but uh, there you go. If we were to revolve that then round the x-axis, it's going to generate this kind of lampshade shape, if you like. Okay. So we're out to find this volume. Now the volume V, let's just put it up here, volume V is going to equal pi times the integral from 1 to 3 of y squared with respect to x and y is x squared plus 1 so we're going to have to expand x squared plus 1 all squared before we can integrate it with respect to x. And If we do that we're going to have pi times the integral going from 1 to 3 of x to the power 4 plus 2x squared plus 1 and that be integrated with respect to x. So in the usual way if we integrate this, integrate x to the 4, you've got x to the power 5 over 5, and then you've got plus 2x cubed over 3 plus an x and the limits are from 1 to 3. Substitute your 3 in first and then subtract what you get when you put the 1 through. So when you put the 3 through you're going to have 3 to the power 5 over 5 plus 2 times 3 cubed over 3 plus 3 and then minus what you get when you put 1 through. Well, that's going to be 1 fifth plus 2 thirds plus 1. If you work that out on your calculator what you should find you get is 1066 divided by 15 pi. That's in terms of pi. And I always prefer to write units cubed on the end, okay, just because it's a volume. If you leave that out, I'm sure you're not going to lose marks, but uh, I would encourage you to do that. Okay, well, I hope that's given you a rough idea then of how to tackle volumes of revolution where we have our curve and we take an area bounded by the curve to the x-axis and it's bounded between two lines generates this solid of revolution and this is the formula and you can apply it like this. In future tutorials what I'll show you is some more advanced problems uh, using this kind of concept so maybe you might find those useful as well.